Um, I've spent the last two years in Edinburgh as a student and the level of political engagement has been absolutely incredible and extremely inspiring. Even, last, even in the last month, people's attitudes have changed so vastly. If I walk through Marchmont, my, uh, my student area, yes, signs in all the windows, in all the local shops, etc, etc. And it's watching democracy in action. From enthusiastic taxi drivers, to conversations with people in pubs, in clubs, in cafes and in restaurants. You queue conversations all throughout the day um, with people exchanging views vibrantly. Um, everyone is aware of politics and is inescapable. Where else do we see levels of engagement like that? Um, the Guardian reported yesterday that 97% of people in Scotland are now registered to vote. I mean, how incredible is that? <laughs> but why we're here today is that we, just like Scotland, need to question which governments we give legitimacy to. We need to ask who does our government work for and what interests do they uphold. Yeah, this is where we have audience participation. So I want to ask you all, um, do you want to elect a government that only seeks to look after the rich? No! <laughs> do you want to elect a government that takes you into illegal wars? No! Do you want to elect a government that gives billionaires a tax cut and, and then cuts welfare and benefits for the sick and the disabled and the poor? No. Um, do you want a government to raise tuition fees of your children and slowly pushes the poor out of education? No! Good. <laughs> because we mustn't just expect a similar devolution package for Wales. I mean, this is the beginning of a battle. A battle to put the power back in the hands of you and I, rather than a group of wealthy, white, overprivileged men sitting in Westminster. We've seen... <laughs> politics and this terrifies the elites and we won't forget. We are part of a new story. For as long as I can remember, the United Kingdom has told itself a grand and bloody story about ruling the waves, vanquishing foes and beating the world. The power of kings, queens and landowners dominate our history and our story of ourselves. In Scotland, the story is starting again. Millions of people are talking amongst each other, ignoring the lies of the mainstream media and the Westminster parties. A democratic renewal, something modest, something based on all of us. And the story continues here in Wales. Thank you. Thank you. Although I'm Welsh, I had the privilege of living, studying and working in Scotland for 10 years, where I met and worked with some amazing and passionate, fantastic people. In fact, I was living in Scotland due to the referendum vote for the creation of the Scottish Parliament back in 1997, where I voted for the new powers that Scotland needed. It is a fundamental human right that all people have the right to self-determination, to have the opportunity and the power to change their own communities and to build a positive future for everyone. Providing the opportunities they need through true democratic action to govern their own lives and develop a form of government that is truly accountable, transparent and participatory, involving everyone on an equal basis. And so my message to the people of Scotland is simple. These opportunities don't come along very often and I would urge all Scots to look, at the, to look past the media bias, to look at the facts, to look at the arguments and hopefully vote the same way as millions of their fellow countrymen and women and vote yes. Yes to a strong economic future and yes to a new and vibrant Scotland. Go for it, Scotland!